My friend Nick Rains put me onto this new program. Well, actually, I'm not sure if it's new or not. Um, it's called 3D LUT Creator Pro, and um, it's probably the, the most amazing program I've found for altering color in your images. So I started mucking around. I've only been using it for a couple of weeks, but I, I really like what it can do. So this is your basic interface. I'm not going to go through all the, the details of how it works because, one, I don't know all the ways it works, but um, uh, there's other tutorial videos you can get online and on the website for this, for this particular program that explains a lot of the stuff. But I just wanted to show you this image that I've uh, uh, altered using uh, this program. And it's quite amazing what it can do. So um, basically, the A and B, that's basically where you do most of your work. Obviously, it has curves and all sorts of other stuff as well, crazy stuff. But I'm just going to concentrate on how I can alter this color. Now, you also have uh, this grid here. You can change this, the amount of uh, spots in the grid. You can make it uh, increase, or you can actually go to a circular grid, so something like that. Um, and obviously, if you grab one of these points, you can start moving colors around all over the place. So pretty, pretty cool. So what I want to do is I wanted to actually make this water uh, blue, not brown. So as you hover over the water, you can see uh, over here the point set of um, where the, the color of brown is actually appearing. You see all this stuff here is actually the image on the color wheel. So that's the image is made up of all these different colors. So you can increase the grid if you want to um, increase the accuracy, but for this particular one, um, as I'm hovering over the brown water, I can see over on the grid where those points are. Now most of it is along this line here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, um, it's also there is some up in this area uh, on some of these areas, but I want to um, grab pretty much all those colors. Those colors, I, I put them together and then drag and drop a a uh, line around there and then I can pull this down to a blue color. Now if I go anywhere you'll see it changes to whatever color I want. But I want um, sort of green water. It's affecting a lot of the image but not all of it. The, the middle point there is your neutrals and that's uh, anchored so that allows uh, most of the midtones to sort of stay fairly neutral. But I've found uh, that's I want a blue water, so there we go. There's my blue water. Now try and do this with any other program. I've tried it in Photoshop and Capture One. None of them work as good as this. Now you can see I've got a bit of pink going on there, and there's two points I can see as I hover over uh, that can um, affect that. So I'm going to grab each one of these and pull that down a little bit, like so, and grab the other one as well. Pull that down. Yikes too far. So let's go back in time. Um, it was probably... I'm just going to pull it back until I see that change. There we go. That's getting a little bit more blue there. It's just in that shadow area. Still a few problems up here. And I can see that those points there that probably could come down. So I'm just going to pull a bit down there as well. So now I've got pretty much uh, blue water. It's pretty, pretty interesting. There's before and there's after. So you can see you're taking all that brown out of the out of the sand as well. Now, if I wanted to um, mess around with these uh, the greens and the yellows here, you can see as I hover over it, you can see over on the left on the grid, you can see which points are affected. But I could grab, you know, a few of these. I could just click and drag like so pick up those points, and if I drag them out, they'll add more saturation. So the further you go out to the outside of the wheel, the more saturated, the closer you get in, the less saturated, so you can desaturate. So heaps of really cool control. But in this case, I want it to be, you know, maybe a little bit warmer. Um, that's probably not right. Maybe we'll stick to what the color is. If I keep along this line, there shouldn't be a change in the color, just the saturation. So I've just saturated a bit more there, okay? Now, the other thing you can do is you can actually add light to these points. If you hold down the shift key, you can click and drag, and you'll see getting lighter, getting darker. So all of a sudden you've got that control as well, which is pretty amazing. And you can see it tells you how much you're lightening. So I lighten that point a bit, click on that one, 
shift click lighter or darker might go a little bit darker on that one possibly and then this one again I could click on that one and shift click and just make that a little bit lighter so you got all that control even with the with that, these ones over here the blues if I shift click on that point you see it's getting lighter through there or darker so I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter so that's you know how you can how easily you can manipulate the colors in this program and when you actually see when you zoom in it does a really good job and it doesn't uh, make all the colors go weird doesn't posterize it's, it's really quite accurate now what I've done what I didn't show you in the start was here is the image you open this image up this is the same image and I open it up in Photoshop first so you open it up in Photoshop and then you open it up in the 3d LUT creator uh, program and what you have down the bottom here is a little button that says uh, LUT to PS so basically what it's going to do now is so if I click on that it will actually load up that LUT um, into Photoshop on that on that file as a layer so there we go before and after so now we've got it as a layer um, we can actually drop the opacity back if we find it too strong and or we can add rub bits out because it's a layer we can put a bit of color back if we want a certain area to have a bit more warmth then we can put that back in there like that so on and so forth so you've got all that control the other thing that you can do which is really cool is if you like that, that particular look and you have a whole lot of images that you want to do it to um, you can then save this 3D LUT so you click on that button there and it asks you where you want to put it and, and there's a folder um, in within uh, Photoshop where you can save these 3D that's the folder there and it's a 3D LUT you can give it a name um, whatever blue water which is a pretty crappy name and click and it's saved as a .cube file click save and there we go so now that that effect that we've done is actually been saved as a 3d LUT which we can use which we can now open up in Photoshop so I think uh, before I can actually do that let's go back to Photoshop now uh, there's a file I'm going to just close that down and I'm not going to save it I'm just going to restart Photoshop Okay, and then I'm going to reopen Photoshop, and this hopefully will give it um, the 3D LUT that we've just created a chance to load up in Photoshop. So let's get Photoshop going here, and we're going to go and open the, uh, the recent document, which I'm hoping is this one. So there's the original file. Now, if we go over here to our color lookup table, adjustment layers, uh, we've got load 3D LUTs and it'll be in here uh, what do I call it blue water click on that Ta -da. there it is so now all these other images I've got um, that I've got the same color tone I can open them up and just add this the 3d light has been saved as a preset so you can make all sorts of crazy ones They're really cool really great stuff um, other things you can do is you can actually um, let's go back to 3D LUT, um, you can actually um, load up a comparison image, um, a reference image. So let's, um, which basically means if you find an image that you like that has a particular color tone, you can load it up and apply those colors to your image. So um, there's a whole lot of stuff I've found on Pinterest where you, you can, um, you, you, like filmmakers will have their, their color palette and, and all little swatches there. So I've just done a screen grab of those and use those as my reference images now I'm gonna do it to this one it probably won't look any good let's before we do that we're just gonna reset uh, this LUT let's go back and start start afresh um, now let's say I wanted to add uh, and load a reference image and I'll just find one in here I've got some uh, let's see yeah this one here Kubrick this is from the Stanley Kubrick film. Click open. And there's our reference image. It doesn't have to be high res. Now I can actually compare those and put them side by side. Like that. 
Uh, if you want to know how to do all this, you can just read the manual uh, or watch the other tutorial videos. But the main thing is I wanted you guys to know that, hey, this is very cool for editing colors. Now that we have them side by side, I can go in there and go to um, edit and auto match colors to reference. So this image on the right here should change in a sec. It may look pretty bad, but um, you get the idea. So yeah, you, you, there we go. So I mean, let's try to match the, the, the color palettes there. So obviously it's not perfect, but yeah, you get the idea. So you would just click okay. Um, you can make some adjustments. I haven't mucked around with that yet. And then we can um, send that LUT to Photoshop as well. If I had that image open, if I got it open, let's go back to Photoshop. I have, um, let's delete that. Let's go back and send it off. There we go. So we've created that look um, just by using that reference image. And I think that's really quite amazing. Now, obviously it's not the look we're looking for, but there's nothing to say you can't drop the opacity back, take it back to zero, pull it up slowly, and all of a sudden you're getting some pretty crazy looks. Of course, the same thing applies where you can just scroll through your, let's see Daisy, let's go back. I've just done the wrong thing. Hit the move tool. If we're gonna scroll through the blend modes, we gotta make sure that the move tool is selected, not the brush tool. Uh, otherwise we'll change the blend mode of the brush, not the um, blend mode over here. So shift plus will allow me to scroll through. And as I'm changing blend modes, I can see what's going on, what changes are being made. You might find something that looks really good um, or not. And you just flick through until you're happy. Just go for it, flicking away, flicking away. That's kind of nice. Um, yeah, so you get the general idea. It's an amazing little program, and uh, you can see how it's pulled all these colors from the image in this direction. It's really, really neat. It's good fun. You can have a lot of fun experimenting with this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little intro. I suggest you go out and download the program. There is a trial. Have a bit of fun with it, and I'm pretty sure you'll be you'll be buying it like I did. Thanks, guys.